organizing committee put together with this panel of people, essentially um, um, practitioners from the design industries and um, with training you know, for, uh, in design architecture and we also have um, um, people with expertise in photography and education community to share you know, their views and, and, and practical experience on this topic. Now, without further ado, I, it, it's very simple housekeeping for this afternoon. We're going to show a minute uh, video clip, and then you know we can uh, use that as a prelude you know, to, to start you know, the discussion this afternoon. And each speaker will be given five to ten minutes, and then uh, we'll spend more time you know, on the uh, panel discussion in Q&A. Is that clear? All right, thank you very much. So without further ado, that's a quick for this afternoon. Uh, the bird feeder's coming. Tom Zaki is turning garbage into gold. From increased on juice pouches, we make into messenger bags and pencil cases, chip bags into homework folders, vinyl records into clocks, circuit boards into frames. In 2003, Zaki dropped out of Princeton University to focus on his company, TerraCycle. His first product was fertilizer, but now he can't take his eyes off the trash. Just in 2008, we saved uh, somewhere over 100 million units of waste. TerraCycle takes ordinary garbage like juice pouches, cookie wrappers, and plastic bags and turns them into new products. Companies like Kraft and Frito-Lay send their garbage to Zaki instead of to the dump. Schools, churches, and other groups also help. For each item they collect, TerraCycle donates two cents to the school or charity of their choice. While the weakened economy affects sales, Zaki isn't worrying. We keep costs low by having waste as our input. And this may change consumer habits. When you buy a TerraCycle pencil case, it's not going to cost more than a cotton pencil case. Green sometimes is considered very elitist. You know, it's only for people who can afford it. We're trying to break that down and do it for everybody. Okay. Now, this is a clip you know, from the USA, and this company is renowned the business model of uh, how you turn the trash, basically, you no know, garbage material. Upcycle means uh, value creation. It is something that could be used. And so this is something that, you know, that, um, the society in the West or the international community are more you know, well-developed in the concept. And uh, but this afternoon, you know, um, we have the privilege to invite a few local uh, social entrepreneurs, also designers, uh, 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 trained with training in design background, you know, to share with us their their business, you know, their concept, how to turn, you know, the, the uh, uh, put, you know, the upcycling concept into perspective. Okay, now we'll start off with um, Wailing Tang, you know, to one of the founders of Asia Who. Now, because the speaker bio is in your your, your material, and I tend not to read out because you know I try to save more time, you know, to, for discussion afterwards. But um, Wailing, I met her, you know, in a recent design market, uh, you know, sense of reason to. And, um, and her products and uh, were shown you know, to the public with much uh, uh, interest around. So uh, I'll let her introduce to you her company and um, so perhaps five to ten minutes. Thanks. Thank you, Wally. Hong Kong in 2009, Hong Kong 
social, uh, Hong Kong Social Enterprise Challenge. Thanks to this award, that inspired and encouraged her to pursue her career in upcycling. And she becomes my boss just after her graduation of master degree. And before you go, I'll show you the product pictures. I want to show you how we started from scratch. Uh, we received the banners from the community and started to do some mock-ups. Uh, because there were various types of banners, we need to do a lot of trials and modifications before we could send out our design to the battery for production. Why upcycling? The reasons are simple. Uh, we want to save this useful material and so save our landfill, already full landfill, which capacity can only uh, last for another 10 years. Um, if there's no drastic reduction in waste generation, we will have to give up another 400 hectares of country park to uh, for landfill for another 20 years lease. Uh, that was the picture. This was the banner we received from uh, Hong Kong U two weeks ago. That was 30 meter long, brand new, and good quality. It was being abandoned because it had defects on the printing. If, if we did not go collect it, we just simply threw away after just born. And the life of banner is so short, that's why we are here to extend their life by turning them into useful and durable products. They are waterproof, uh, beautiful, colorful. Why don't we use this uh, nature to make something, uh, <laughs> make something nice? Uh, so our products are called Deja Vu, means you have seen or experienced somewhere before. What is the difference between uh, upcycle and recycle? Uh, the concept of upcycle is very different from recycle. Most of the time, the product and materials are treated as trash while they are still functioning. And take banners as example. Uh, what the people do with the banners is ship them all the way to China and then break them down into pieces. Uh, in order to separate the mesh and plastic. And then the raw plastic material will then further manu manufacture to be another plastic product. And the pr products um, are not upgraded and usually they are downgraded. Um, and the whole process involves in considerably energy consumption. And upcycling to data book is consume as little energy as possible to prolong the life of the product. Okay, uh, here are our objectives and missions to promote the eco friendly lifestyle and promote the culture of responsible consumption. Because an irreversible consumption can endanger our future, because uh, we waste useful resources and raw materials, and raise awareness on global social issues by donation and campaign, and help the social disadvantaged group by giving them uh, job opportunities. This is our working mode, current working mode, from connection to production. We collect the uh, banners from university or from the promotion uh, events. After they, they finish the event, they will uh, abandon the banners immediately. So we go collect and then we design and transfer to China factory and then production. Our first batch of products was successfully launched out, launched out, launched out, and that was the past expo in 2010. The campaign uh, 
our campaign is called 100 Bags, 100 Hopes. For one and for each bag we sell, we donate another pants, banana cancel cake with stationery to the school students in Afghanistan. All stationery and pencil cases are all ready to ship, to ship out once you have sold uh, our 100 bags. Last but not least, please add us now in Facebook. You can see our updates and product photos. And most important, you can pre-order and order there. Thank you. Thank you, Wayne. Thank you. Now we will we will do the the, the Q and A afterwards. But try to remember, you know, this is a good example of you know, how the, the designer uh, used the material collected, you know, from uh, the exhibition events, you know, conferences and universities, you know, so, which normally would go to be more lengthy, but they use the collection and then turn it into something usable. Yeah, we are. We our position like core director. Actually, we are also doing logistic administration. Right. right, okay. Very good. Now, the next case, you know, I would like to invite um, um, also uh, um, a social entrepreneur, um, Joseph. Joseph Moon. And um, he co founded a company called Hang Handsome Bag uh, with Philip Pops uh, earlier in the year. Yes. Yeah. And um, he's an architect by training. So, he's also another example of how a designer is put in you know, his perspective, you know, to, um, uh, and sense of appreciation of how to turn materials as you know deemed not valuable into something valuable. So we look forward to your share. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I'm Joseph, and uh, I'm one of the founders of uh, Handsome Bag Company. And this is us. Uh, Billy is my other partner. Unfortunately, he's not in town right now. Uh, but here is us uh, looking around the Brisbane booth that actually had a lot of fun making bags. So. Uh, Billy's a lawyer, and I'm an architect by trade. But uh, at night, we kind of transform ourselves into, you know, secret bag makers, and, and, and uh, you know, that's a superpower. And uh, a lot of people ask us what our story is, and it really started earlier this year when he and I met, um, actually at a program by Paul Yu called Upcycling. And then uh, through there, we just realized we had a lot of ideas that kind of um, matched, and then we just wanted to do something, make something, Create something because during the day we sit on a bus for nine hours a day, so so we just you know we're kind of restless. So one day we were walking along and then we saw kind of a, one of those chop shops for taxis and realized that they were throwing out all these seat covers, uh, the ones that you sit on. And then quickly we realized that we had a great opportunity here because they just threw them away. And the fact is. Um, we also were thinking about designing something that evoked kind of the essence of Hong Kong. And without, you know, overly saying I love Hong Kong or something. And then we quickly realized that as much as you hate Hong Kong taxi drivers, everyone has a great Hong Kong taxi story. You know, whether you're really drunk or whether the, the guy trying to cheat you money or something. And then from there, we, we kind of suddenly realized we can probably take these kind of materials and turn them into some sort of bags. Uh, that being said, we had no idea how to make bags. Uh, and our first one, we, we spent four days with like a mini sewing machine, like trying to put one together. But then that's also when the upcycling program helped us out and um, uh, put us in touch. Ooh, that's actually, uh, we side branch and sometimes made furniture too. That was a taxi seat they threw out. Actually, that was even before our bags, because then we realized that uh, since they were throwing seats out, they might as well throw, you know, what else can we use for? So, um, this is where our business model kind of differs a bit because um, Billy and I are firm believers of keeping everything local. And this is, uh, Kevin, uh, she's Quan, uh, Quan Tse, uh, Sister Quan. And she's actually one of the NGOs we work with, uh, very close together. In fact, I just saw her this morning. And uh, we're firm believers of keeping the design in Hong Kong, uh, sourcing the materials in Hong Kong, and having the products produced in Hong Kong. That way, you know, it's like an enclosed cycle. And then from the profits that we make, we can pour them back in and develop more products and hopefully grow this into a really uh, good community. And, and we like to work with people that like to work with us. 
because uh, when we approached a lot of seamstresses at the beginning, they totally did not, they, they, were, they thought we were crazy because, you know, we're taking taxi seats and making something out of them. But, uh, you know, that being said, after a lot of trial and error, you know, um, we came out with our kind of first prototype of our bags, and then um, I think it's, it's been a, you know, a really positive case of, of really uh, not only upcycling, you know, a very humble product, but also being able to be kind of deadly efficient, like, you know, I can, I can get off work and then, you know, visit Assistant One and then talk to her about product development. And on top of that, we really try to be as efficient because with all the offcuts we make from these bags, we realize, hey, we can make some cases, you know? Why not some, you know, eyeglass cases or pouches? And uh, from there, we realize that uh, there's just a lot of, you know, little details we can incorporate. And uh, just, you know, it's been a pretty crazy journey so far. And these are, you know, materials you find in the taxi and so on. And uh, to end with this, we actually put together a short video of uh, the story of, of uh, Sister Kwan and our relationship so far as a band company. Hopefully, you guys can enjoy it. I'm not going to follow all of you. Ga 都是差不多是社工或者社企那類 咁所以有一次呢,佢就將你哋嗰啲,即係,呢三罐櫃嗰啲三罐咗出嚟,咁之後就俾咗多十幾件嘅俾我哋五個婦女,咁我哋運咗幾件返去就將佢改變用途,
你即係係自自己做出嚟嘅嘢，因為積攬心或者係做咩啫嘛，自己做嘅嘢出嚟嘅係 O K 嘅，唔好攞錢買冇得計呢個價值嘅，係啊，因為你係得一個或者得呢啲料冇嘅，你先可以揾到係咪先？即係咁樣咯，即係乜獨一無二，我當佢係板咯。你起貨都起唔到啊，啲全部都係板嚟嘅，即係咁樣。如果買咩樣都有啦。係咪先？或者用錢嘅價值冇得冇得計嘅，所以我哋又 keep 住就係中意咁樣車自己做，又做呢啲嘢咯，有創意嘅嘢啦，或者自己人欣賞嘅嘢咯，就係、是、咁啦。What urged them you know, to take this um, entrepreneurship? I think it's always inspired people you know, to start something totally different. Now, um, um, now coming back to a bit, you know, from the, the education perspective, the next speaker is Marsha from the School of Design, Polytechnic University. Now, I understand she's going to talk about uh, some case experience in Cambodia, you know, people working on social innovations. Now, let's see how the people, you know, to, uh, uh, utilize the concept and put the same perspective and views in a different territory.
but uh, now she got uh, very good skills, and then uh, she go to teach younger uh, newcomers uh, how to sew these bags. And for the, um, for the organization, because uh, they think about that it is not just um, something NGO and uh, asking people to donate money. Because they are telling their uh, clients that they have to earn money on their own. So they try to work it in a um, um, social enterprise way. Uh, so they think that the uh, quality, the design, is very important. So they um, have involved uh, foreign designers which are uh, volunteers to help designing all uh, bags or the other uh, products. These products are by the um, foreign design volunteers. So um, the uh, staffs there have to um, classify the difficulty the difficultness of uh, working on uh, these products. Let's say these are the shopping bags. Uh, in the shop you can have this and you can buy this and then uh, add, say, um, a few bucks of uh, a few cents and then you can have um, these uh, shopping bags for your so uh, this is the easiest uh, one because it's just paints uh, the um, newspaper. So it's uh, training from easy techniques to more difficult ones like this. Because, uh, for this one you have to um, make all these little bits and then make it together. And if you have uh, good qualities on these, you can have uh, some um, senior training on sewing bags, something like that. So actually, it helps in uh, different aspects. Uh, first, the parents can um, the parents can earn uh, money, and then they can stay at home to work on these products. So they can take care of their kids. And then the kids can um, go to school and no longer stay on the street. And of course, these are upcycle products, so that um, it's environmentally friendly. And a, a very good point is that uh, for these upcycle products, uh, it got lots of steps to um, clean up and to cut something like that. It needs lots of uh, manpower for uh, working in these small, uh, they actually giving job opportunities to them. So it is um, turning some bad things to good things. And so they uh, also have a good network to sell. All their shops are uh, near the uh, tourist spots. So that, um, because for uh, the Cambodians, they might not think that it is good because they always see these Rice bags, no. Why I have to pay a lot for these? But for the printers, uh, we are very happy to see this wow, it's very trendy. So uh, it is their tactics to um, focus on the foreigners and business market. And also, they got uh, these tags on uh, the bags so that we know uh, they are really helping the kids. The money will go back to the organization. For other purposes, they are uh, these and tutu. They are training uh, the tutu drivers also to protect the uh, children. So after the uh, foreign cases, uh, we try to work it in Hong Kong uh, because for a uh, normal model, we are having take take for uh, take the. Um, natural material, and then um, we make some goods, and then we pressure. It is our normal model, but we don't want it to happen again. So we change it into a new, new logo and into new things. From waste, we take it, we take them, and then we make new products. Uh, it is the sixth 
um, it is for upside grain. We don't want to just uh, keep it like DIY handcraft one off thing, but uh, how we can develop it into a system. So from uh, collecting material uh, and inventorize them in a different category so that the designers can access the uh, material easily and then uh, they can with the material, they can have their creativity on new things and then uh, how to uh, work it out with the uh, social enterprise and just so uh, Joseph have uh, presented a very good example how to co uh, operate with the social enterprises uh, on the production and then how to launch it into the market and for consumption. Uh, so in different sectors, we are having uh, some experiments like these. Um, actually, there are lots of um, ways in Hong Kong in different category that we can pack it for upcycling, like the industrial goods and then um, also from the trade uh, trade industry, uh, the um, the um, and then uh, also domestic waste. So, uh, like the uh, bottles. And then we have, uh, after um, licensing with all those companies and factories to take the waste, uh, we try to invite the um, designers to come and have some tests on the uh, material and work on different products. This is lamps, accessories, and we uh, also involve the um, NGOs on the uh, specialized on sewing the body bags. And uh, Huangzhe was just mentioned that the um, from the uh, clothes to bags and scarves. Uh, and then it is not the end because uh, we have to launch it in the market. And we have uh, a handful of sample here. This, uh, this is ATV company and they are working on uh, the trashes uh, uh, of cars, you know, uh, the cars are all by metals, they will be just a waste. So, uh, instead of making it into, uh, on, uh, into raw material, they just pick up the parts and then reform them into a beautiful uh, furniture and then they are selling it uh, on, online now. And this is another example that uh, we are working with uh, Bellas of Body uh, company on organic soap. Uh, because they would like to have um, packaging on their new bar soap because uh, previously they are all, they only produce liquid soap. So um, because they are environmentally friendly, they are uh, company philosophy, so it it's a good match to use the upcycling um, packaging for them. And this uh, e set of packaging will launch to, into the market later this year. So, um, last but not least, uh, we will have another exhibition uh, in coming uh, September, next month, in JCCAC, and hope to see you there. <coughs>
to help with the experience. But, yeah, but increasingly, I think it's important you know, to put perspective to the design thinking. Yeah. Now, what we have been, you know, the food of prior two cases of practical experience, how the designers get going, you know, the less roll the sleeves and, and, and do it. But behind, there are certain, you know, the regular thinking and, and, and design principles put in perspective. So, thank you. What I'm going to talk to you a little bit today and very briefly is uh, notions of how design can fit in with uh, social innovation and social entrepreneurship for multiple different ways of being innovative. This is a little bit about me. I'm the uh, Associate Chair of Photography at SCAD. I'm a professional fine art photographer myself. We also do documentary work, documentary photography, all of the above. But today, I'm mostly going to talk about concepts of design and how people begin thinking like a designer. And here's one thing that I'm really interested in talking about today is mostly exactly what social innovation means and also how it fits in with larger corporations. This is one thing that people often don't think about. When we talk about social awareness, we talk about recycling, how everyone knows we have to make use of waste materials. The thing is, large corporations know this as well. They know that they produce massive waste, they know that they're not good for the environment, they know they need to help people that are working. The problem is, they can't think creatively to solve that problem because they're thinking always about the bottom line, about making money. Well, here's something that's really interesting. How can we as creative people, as designers, come to them and solve their problem for them? That's basically what I'm interested in talking about today because they know this is a problem. They're not ignorant of it, right? They simply don't know how to get around it through design solutions. So that's really what I want to focus on today. This is also some of the student work that SCAD has produced. Uh, and I'll talk about exactly why various corporations have come to speak to our students because we provide the design needs that provide social innovation for them. Remember, design thinking is essentially the ability to find empathy, creativity, and rationality to meet user needs and drive business success. This is the real key, and this is really what I want to focus on for everyone to understand. Business success and social innovation can go hand in hand. You can make money as a business if you are socially aware and environmentally aware. Many businesses simply don't think this way or understand that by altering their design slightly, they can have massive social impact. All businesses want to do this. They want to have positive social impact while also making the demands of their investors and being able to make money. Everyone knows this, right? If you come to a company and say, hey, if you make a few subtle changes, you'll be helping the environment and you'll make more money. Name one company that wouldn't do it. They're all going to do it, right? So the key is how can we as designers approach this problem and actually deal with them on the terms that they want to be working with? So here are some of the design thinking tools that we use and that we begin thinking about. We're going to use mind mapping, competitive analysis, trend analysis, all of these things. These are essentially business ways of thinking. What you're going to look at is exactly what the client needs and then figure out how your designs can maximize their profits while also maximizing your goal of social innovation. This is what we're going to do. We have to go out and we have to discover and analyze what people need. We have to design, we have to develop, we have to deploy, and then we have to go back and rethink all of our designs. This is the next thing that people often forget. When you're designing anything, you're probably not going to get it right on the first time. Very much like the first time you made your bags, right? Oh, you did this, right? Basically, all I'm talking about is how to begin thinking like a designer, and it's exactly what you guys have done, right? You basically look at what are the materials, what do I need, what do I want to develop, how am I going to do it, and then how do I rethink the whole process. That's really what thinking like a designer is. It's about meeting the needs of the marketplace. The example I'm going to give is this company named Hobiecat. Hobiecat came to SCAD for one particular reason. The recreational water sports are dominated by one thing, and we all know what it is. It's jet skis, right? Everyone, when they go on a vacation, they want to get on a jet ski and ride a jet ski around. Well, what's the problem with jet skis? They're bad for the environment. They're dangerous, right? So Hobie Cat basically came to SCAD and said this. Right now, we make these unbelievably awesome catamarans, right? Can a normal person, can you and I just get in that catamaran and ride it? <laughs> no, <laughs> right? This requires years of training. But they began thinking to themselves, you know what we can do? We can provide for the recreational 
market, we're going to take more jet skis off of the water and make it so that people, when they go travel someplace, want to have a fun experience that's also environmentally friendly. But here's the problem. We don't know how to design something for the normal person to just get in and ride. So this is what SCAD students actually did. They began analyzing, okay, exactly what do people want to ride in and what do they require? These are our students actually working on this design process. How can we actually make this happen? What are the things that are the most important? You guys can probably figure out number one, what's the biggest problem with anything on the water? It's getting in it, <laughs> right? We have to design it so that everyone from you know age 10 to age 60 can get in the boat. Things like that, right? The uh, members of Hobiecat actually came and talked to the students to figure out exactly what the needs were. This is them looking at previous design at Hobiecat. Then this is the students, and they made this out of duct tape, right? Out of just regular tape. They're, they actually begin designing and figuring out, okay, how can we make this recreational vehicle something that is not just competitive to the wave runners, right, to the jet skis, but when people show up, they'll actually want to get in it, they want to ride in it, it'll be good for everyone. This is them actually testing out their prototype. They redesign it through CAD. They completely design it through a computer molding system. Then they actually go and cut it, you know, manufacture the actual product. They vacuum mold it the way that it will be done in industry. Why are they doing all of this? Because it's nice to come to a company and have an idea. It's completely different to come to them and say, you know what, you can actually do this. And it's efficient. And you'll make money off of it. This is the design team and actually what they ended up creating. And this is what they actually made. So they actually ended up making, making this Moby Cat. And it's designed for anyone to come in and get in. The key important things are like the cup holders are really easy to use, right? It's like things that Hobie didn't really consider important because they were making competitive catamarans. So all of a sudden they now have a user-friendly, really environmentally friendly, fun product for people to actually get out and try. It looks unusual. It requires two people to have the correct ballast, so inevitably you're out on the water with your friends. All of the above. So in other words, they're able to make money for Hobie they're able to change the way people think about what they're going to do on their vacation, right? I'm not going to go out and get in this monster that leaks gasoline. I'm going to go out and have fun with my friend, right? And SCAD actually went out and produced this. Another example is Red Bull comes to SCAD, right? And they, they're already thinking, we all know motorcycles churn out all this nasty gas and things like that. And Red Bull, of course, is supporting this. They're supporting a, a racing team, basically. So they come to SCAD and they say, I want you to design for us essentially an environmentally friendly bike. I want to see what the future of motorcycles will look like so we can begin designing for it now and seeing how, you know, uh, essentially preparing for exactly what the bike in the future will be. So SCAD students design, design this bike. They design it so it doesn't have a fuel tank, so it's going to run off a fuel cell. They're going to design it to be absolutely uh, publish, right? So that, it, so that it'll, uh, it'll, and they, this is a real bike. They built the bike. So they built and designed a motorcycle that will probably be the motorcycle of the future. Now, the motorcycle really didn't work because, <laughs> because the battery wasn't you know, powerful enough to actually make it function. But we get the idea. In other words, there are these major corporations out there that are already forward thinking, right? And so designers can come in and say, this is an awesome bike, too. Most motorcyclists, who here has a motorcycle? If you see this bike, wouldn't you be like, I want that bike. That looks great. My Ducati's good, but that looks better, right? So how can I use design in this way that's forward thinking in some way. And how can I interact with corporations in the exact same way, right? So all of, everything that you're thinking, you don't have to just think to yourself, oh, well, these corporations will never want to deal with me. They'll never want to deal with social innovation. They'll never want to help the environment. That's simply not true. They, they just don't have a creative way of thinking. This is a great example of working with VTech. Also, remember, when you think of social entrepreneurship or you know, creating social change, there are other ways of thinking about it. There are other ways of dealing with these problems. What these students were dealing with is the notion that in the future we're going to have a lot more elderly. Yes, we all know this. We need to prepare for it now, right? So they, essentially VTech, came to a, a group of students and said, okay, we need to begin designing some things to help the elderly. We need to change our social way of thinking now and understand that we have to take care of the elderly. This counts as social change, right? As, as much as environmentalism. It's saying we need to take care of these people, we need to use technology in a friendly way. What you're actually looking at is this is a device that's essentially a, a very fancy scale, right? It's a scale so that when the elderly take pills out, it knows how much each individual pill weighs. It, over here is a, is a display system. 
system that keeps track of when which pills have to be taken. When the, when the user takes one of the pills out, it obviously reweighs all the bottles and it can say whether or not they've taken the correct pill out. And it can time when the elderly are taking their pills. That's a great product. VTech is going to make a killing on this, right? They're going to make a ton of money off of this, while at the same time helping the elderly. That's, isn't that fantastic? That's exactly what you want to be doing, right? How can you use design, how can you use business to better the world around you, better the lives of people around you, and fit into a business model? It's absolutely possible. There's no doubt about it at all. Uh, I think what I'm going to end on is uh, police cars. Police cars are an interesting thing because, at least in the United States, police cars are, not, are never made as police cars. They are all a purchase. Crown Victoria, that they then convert into a police car. I don't know how your police cars work here. This causes a major problem. This is stupid. This is bad design, right? This is not the way it should be designed. Subsequently, the police officers, when they're trying to deal with their own vehicle, spend as much time dealing with the vehicle as they do fighting crime. They fight their vehicle as much as they fight crime. Does that make sense? That, we don't want that. We want the cops to be happy, we want them to be efficient, we want them focused on their job, not worrying about dials and things, right, while they're driving. This proved to be the single largest problem. The way our cop cars are currently designed, if you've ever seen American Cops or any American movies, right, we have a huge computer that comes out on the side, and da -da 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 -da. so the cops, when they're driving, chasing someone at like 90 miles an hour, they have to keep track of 130 different pieces of input information. Do the cops need to be doing that? No. Instead, what they did is the students have redesigned everything to just have the minimal amount of input coming into the police officer. They don't need to know the tachometer, how fast the revolutions per minute are on their car. When they're chasing someone, they don't need that at all. Right? So, boom, get rid of that. Right? We don't need that. All we need to do is design things for exactly what, the, what they're going to need. S things that are extremely important to, without thinking.